patients. We'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Silverfield, and then open up to questions. We don't get we don't get paid any extra to keep it interesting. I promise you guys. But uh, man, what a what a game! Uh, first off, credit to Boise State. What a tremendous program they are. I talked about it all along. Like. You go and watch their film. They should have beat UCF. There's a reason why they've won 35 conference championships. So credit to Boise State. Uh, I wish them nothing but the re best rest of the season. I'm already dreading going up there in two years because they've got a heck of an outfit and they do it the right way. Quite pleased with the perseverance and resiliency of our guys. Right? Down 17 points, uh, inexcusable pedestrian start. Uh, I know you guys are going to ask why. I don't have that answer, and I've got to find it. And that's on me. Uh, I'll take the blame on that one but not good enough. Um, in all three phases, battle on offense, battle on defense, battle on special teams, all three defense, uh, inexcusable start to the game. It's like we, you know, we, we've played all night games, and I, like we thought it was gonna be a night game again. I don't know what the heck went on. Um, our guys had great focus, great mindset, great approach, great attitude, but we did not go out there and execute. Um, but the one thing, like I've told you guys all along, without having like coach speak, is our guys' eyes and belief in what we're doing is amazing. And that speaks to the young men in that locker room and the culture that they've helped create and build. They believe, they fight, and that's how you go and get 2,800 points um, and find a way to finish and find a way to win a football game. College football is really hard, um, and we found a way. A lot of good individual performances, uh, but that's a team win because at the end of the day, it took every single person uh, to find a way to win the game. Man, it's a, a timely buy. It does seem early, but it's a timely buy and much needed. Uh, you've got a 4 and one Tulane team coming to town, uh, national television game on ESPN on a Friday night where we know that uh, a lot of eyes will, will be here at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Uh, we got a lot of work to do. The, the pleasing thing is, is we have yet to even play a complete quarter in all three phases. And if we can find a way to put it all together for four quarters, we've got something. But uh, we're not there yet, and that's why we practice. That's why we got to find ways to continue to prove and work. Uh, and head in the right direction. But look, man, it, it feels good. Uh, what, uh, proud of those guys and, and the way it went on. Um, there's, there's no such thing as um, ugly wins, uh, but that showed perseverance. And just so pleased with that and, uh, and found a way no matter what it took. What is the message on that sideline uh, with the boys that you got early 17s early? Yeah, you know, Frank, it's when you, as a coach, you can look to the sideline and you can say, okay, either they're worried and they're bitching and complaining and pointing fingers, or they're dialed in and say, okay, what do we need to do? You know, and hey, how, how can I help? What can I do to step up? And that's what I saw. And were we frustrated? Sure. I mean, I'm sitting there, sitting there, and okay, what is it? What do we, what do, we do wrong here? How can we get this fixed? How, in all three phases. And that's where it was a little bit concerning. But the guys, uh, the, the, the 118 guys on the sideline were, Okay, what do we got to do? How do we keep fighting? How do we keep swinging? And that's what was great to see is that opportunity. Hey, how do we go out there and improve? And, uh, and I think that's what makes that, this group special because there was no fret. There was no, oh, my gosh. Um, it was the idea of, hey, what do we got to do to continue to go out there and, and get ourselves back in this game? Do you think this team has a swagger back? Because I don't think the team last year would have pulled this game out. No offense. But I think they might have to back a little bit in yeah. the right direction. Yeah, Terry, I, th I think, you know, and I don't ever like to reflect on years past, but like I've said after the Navy game, I probably would have found a way to lose the game. And I think it speaks for the maturity and the veterans and the leaders uh, that we have on this team. Um, you guys will have the opportunity to talk to some of our players and, you know, right, like a guy like Jeff Cannon, like, man, like even when we're down 17 and he'll be the first time. I made a bunch of mistakes. I'm going to get them fixed, and we're going to go find a way to win this game. Seth Hennigan started off the game slow, and he'll be the first to say, hey. I'm... And that's where you sit there and say, okay, these guys believe and fight. Uh, this is a special group, you know, and that's why – and I've been saying it all along. Um, I, I, like I tell you guys, the only way I can show you is with wins on Saturdays. But I, didn't think, I do think just seeing the fight and the perseverance of these guys, uh, that's what makes such a joy. We've got talent, absolutely, but um, – you guys don't understand the joy I get just being around them, even on a Tuesday practice and just spending time and watching them and, and watching them enjoy being around each other. And that's what's so much fun. And that's why um, I think it gives us a chance to continue to compete at a high level. Can you take us through the uh, Pop kick Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, they've got a fantastic kicker. Um, you know, a lot of those, it was uh, almost, almost the same. I don't know the exact uh, depth, Jonah, on it. Uh, but we hadn't blocked one in, in, you know, in a while. 
And, uh, you know, last year we, we, we gave them close on some. But um, I just think, you know, when you block a kick, I think it just shows uh, a will, if that makes sense. Because unless somebody's schematically doing something they shouldn't, it, you know, a lot of times it just comes. And Jeff Canton got his, you know, big Canadian mitts up there and blocked it and then had the wherewithal to pick it up and, and run it back. So just so phenomenal and just – couldn't happen to a better young man that just pours is poured in this program that loves his teammates and um, you know I mean he was he was hauling tail too uh, we could none of us could keep up last certainly certain but uh, it just what you know we don't like to talk about momentum in college football I don't want to talk about momentum to our players because down 17 we could easily pull their out on them and say okay man we got beat let's go to the bye and find a way to uh, no that was just a sense of energy I mean wow you saw the crowd I think that helped get them back in. Uh, we don't ever want momentum to affect us, but that was a huge turn uh, in, in the game and with what he was able to do. Was there something on that where like, he just made the play, or was there something schematic that um, I, I, John, I don't want to go into the schematics of it, but let, let's give full credit to, to the rest, the other 10 guys, and then Jeff doing his job and being exactly what he needed to and making a phenomenal play on the ball after blocking it. And then, right, you understand if the ball is blocked on our side, we try to get away from it. If it's blocked on their side, we're trying to scoop and score. And we rec that we work that every Thursday and Friday. And, and, and kudos to Jeff and the rest of the defensive guys to being where they were. There's some great blocks down the field. And, and, and Jeff showed uh, that he can run. And, and what a headsy up play by him. And it was fantastic. The long ball to uh, Ron Taylor before the touchdown, how much did that kind of wake everybody up? Did you, like, dial that up, just maybe hoping to get a spark or something going? Well, usually, and this don't, I don't want to sound funny, we don't call plays to hope on them. But we, we, we had to win the one-on-one -on -one battles on some of that stuff. Um, Rock continues to progress at a great level. Uh, he's got great rapport with Seth. And uh, what a huge play he made in, in coming down. But I think, you know, I, I just got done talking to the radio about Rock. He's done a great job. And then you see that the Kobe Drake's huge third down catch, right? Demir, the early drop, and then comes and, and, and scores later on. You know, finding ways, Blake Watson, um, in the past game, all those different guys with different weapons that uh, Seth is finding the tight ends. Um, but yes, that that catch to Rock just showed. Okay, guys, here we go. Like, let's go play our type of football. I told you we we're going to be just fine. And take a deep breath and let's go out there and execute. You mentioned Seth got off a slow start. After you take the lead, you get a stop. He's got third down, and I don't know. His feet might have been in the end zone when he threw the ball, but he throws that pass to Kobe Drake, then throws the touchdown pass to Blank and see like. What does that moment mean in the moment and maybe moving forward for you guys that, that he and the offense were able to deliver in a moment like that? Well, and I've talked to Seth about this, right? Obviously, he's been our quarterback, and we talk about finding a way. And, and you know, the slow start, again, that, that starts with me, uh, whether it's a drop pass, play calling, execution, all those things. Um, but I think that just showed his – you know, willingness to go battle. I mean, I think, like, even watching him run the football, I mean, did you guys see, like, his energy and excitement? Like, I, I, and then when he threw the one touchdown, I thought he was going to come to the sideline and headbutt me. So he's playing with this infectious energy, enthusiasm, and it's been so much fun. But I think that shows us, hey, Seth Hennigan can win us a lot of football games. And he found a way um, to continue to lead this offense the right way, make a lot of different throws, uh, put his body on the line to go out there, and whatever it takes to go 1 0 tonight. And he, he certainly proved that. Talk about the challenge of preparing for two quarterbacks. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you got a starter that's 6'6", 225 pounds, and the running back that is leading the country in all-purpose yards. So who do you tackle? Uh, and it's and so, I mean, you come down, you try to play. And then they have I – mean, where they got those tall wide receivers, I got – you know, I got to call uh, Coach Avalos. We got some big bodies. But, man, those were gigantic humans, and they, they did a phenomenal job. Um, but the quarterback, you know, obviously they both have strong arms. They both – uh, found ways to try to push the ball down the field. But that's always going to be a challenge because everybody's going to try to do different things. Um, our defense give credit you know, to them because, yeah, slow start and, and uh, some things, but they found a way you know, at the end. Obviously, nobody likes those two-minute drives. We also knew what we were doing situationally. Um, but I think more and more teams we're going to see. You know, I know Tulane's played multiple quarterbacks. Just Obviously, they have a, a one they truly have a lot of faith in. So you, you, every week you got to figure out, okay, what are their different attributes? You know, one was... 5'11", the other 6'6", six, six, so I mean, different strengths. Um, but that's the nature of college football, especially on defense now. Coach, you started the last drive, uh, take six and a half minutes off the clock, get a 10-point lead. I mean, I think that's probably one of your longest drives in terms of time. Yeah, that's what you want. You know, when you talk about efficiency, and you guys have heard me use the word consistency with what we need to do on offense, I think that was one of those drives where you're able to hit some of the passes, able to get the run game going, and then use the clock. And I think that allowed you because 
you know, even before half, you know, some people are, use your timeouts. No, like we, uh, <laughs> you got to be so clock management, that's on me. And uh, I, I thought the offense did a great job of handling that. You know, Seth's able to see the clock up there and know when to snap the ball and able to go out there and execute and to be able to punch it in. You know, that was reviewable. And I was like, oh, my gosh, not again on the six-inch line. Uh, but we found a way to score, and, and that's huge because if you can maintain and sustain those type of drives that uh, take a variety of different players being involved and having success, uh, it speaks volumes for what we hope we can do in the future. Yeah, look, and, and forgive me for not addressing that at the beginning. You're exactly right. Day of celebration, the 2003 Tigers. Man, and, and, you know, last night we had our uh, victory walk, and so many of them were here. And it was just an honor and a privilege to be amongst them and to have so many former Tigers, not just in that class, you know, th say, hey, thanks for involving us. Thanks for letting us be around. This is wonderful. We appreciate your young men. And you get a guy like D'Angelo Williams that spoke to our team last night. I mean, you want to talk about the, the best of the best, not only as a football player. I mean, he's College Football Hall of Famer, you know, All-American first-round pick, 11 years in the NFL, but just a true dude that loves his Tigers, loves these players. I mean, he asks about them all the time. He, he, he would do anything for them. And, uh, man, it was such a, an honor just to be a part of that and, and so glad we were able to remember that team. 32 years without a bowl drought. Now, you know, our plan is to obviously continue our bowl streak. Um, we're not focused on that right now, but it was, it was a great day of celebration for that team, for the former Tigers, um, for our city. It was a great crowd. Our student section continues to rock. I love it. And it's been so much fun because you guys know I always talk about the, my history here. And all, but year eight, and that, that's the best our students have ever been. But you know it's going to be even better? Uh, two Fridays from now, or whatever that is, you know, uh, 13 days from now, when this place is going to be rocking. And uh, we're going to be able to put on a show for the whole country to watch, the whole world to watch on ESPN, uh, national game versus uh, a 4 one lane team that's coming in. But we've got we've got to step up our game and see what we're capable of. Well, what do you think about the, the timing of the run game, not just the stats, but being able to pick up those yards in the second half and those, you know, those opportunities? Yeah, I think that's part of it, right, and just seeing, you know, Sometimes it was a hard fought three yards, right? And then other times it was a, hey, a 12-yard gain and then rip one. Um, I think that's important because you've got to be able to run the ball in all four quarters. And we've seen times where, you know, this first quarter we just looked like we couldn't do anything. Um, but to be able to sustain and when you can run the ball in a fourth quarter, and we talked about that six-and-a-half-minute drive and being able to do that, that's where you say, okay, this is something we can hang our hat on um, that we're going to need to continue to use moving forward. Um, it takes everybody. I think it involves the you know, quarterback put us in the right areas with some checks. Um, the running backs obviously ran hard. The O-line blocked well, the tight ends, the receivers. So it took everybody involved, and, and that's, that's pleasing. Obviously, you know, sometimes you guys say, well, hey, Ryan, the, the run game, how do you get it fixed? And then how do you get the – I mean, look, it, collectively we all got a lot of work to do, and it starts with me. I will be better uh, than, you know, starting tonight and tomorrow. Um, but I know our players believe the same as well. Coach, I know you're going to tell me it's just one win, it's one game. But like how important for the energy for the, for the team to get this win and move to the bottom to two-way? Yeah, Devin, I, I, you're right, and I don't, I'm not going to say this was a huge one. It really was, um, because you think about like everybody. When we announced this series, it was supposed to be 2030 and 2031, and then all of a sudden a little bit of conference realignment occurred, and everybody says, "Oh, by the way, you got Boise coming, then you're going there in 2026." Um, and we just know the type of brand of football they played. The, they won the Mountain West last year. They were unanimous picks to win it again. Um, you know, we know what they're capable of. They're year in and year out, just do it the right way. And I talked about it even early in the week. Uh, they, when I first got here and even prior, like they were the model what you wanted your program to look like, the way they've done it. And, you know, um, regardless of where we are and, and, and everything, how it looks. But, man, we want to be a consistently winning program and compete for conference championships like they've done year in and year out. But this one was huge because, one, it does give you a little bit of, okay, hey, we're 4-1. and one. We found another way to win. Uh, and we persevered, and our guys continue to believe, right? It, had that gone the other way, I know our guys would have showed up and said, okay, we're going to keep working to get better. But I think what it does just says, okay, man, hey, a little bit more excitement, a little bit more push uh, to do things the right way. And, and I'm going to challenge you guys. I always do whenever things are going well, we're going to continue to push and challenge to get better. And, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be great. And I think it also sets up for a tremendous opportunity for a heavyweight fight uh, in a couple weeks. You mentioned okay. it earlier, but Jancy obviously scored four touchdowns. I mean, he, he, he is a phenomenal, I'm, 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 phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal running back. Uh, I mean, 
go watch any of the film. Like I, sleepless nights this week because of what he is. We talked to our defense about low tackles all week and just tackling them low. Um, and once the first guy got there, the second guy had to get there. I mean, he's a bulldozer. I mean, he runs through guys. Um, and just pleased because the defense won, low tackled, and swarmed to it. Obviously, he still did some things. Um, and I think we're going to watch the film and guys are like, man, I could have made that tackle, could have made that tackle. And uh, he's going to have a huge season ahead of him. But uh, we were able to find a way, you know, with the yards per carry and just find a way to contain him.